Hey there friends, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, back for another Assassin's Creed Valhalla video, and the time has finally come for us to start diving into some build guides. Now you guys have been asking for builds since the very first Assassin's Creed video that we put out, and I honestly just wanted to wait until we got to a point in the game where things were a little quieter and we could kind of really dive into the specifics of builds that could potentially be viable for future content, i.e. the River Raids coming in February, and then Wrath of the Druids in March. Now, of course, with all build guides, I want to say this. The build that we're talking about today is a collection of my thoughts, my experiences with the game, and are my own opinions. You guys can disagree with me. In fact, when you do disagree with me, let me know in the comment section, because usually I read your response, I write back to you, and we get a good discussion going about whatever we're talking about. Now, the first build I wanted to start with is called the Viking Warlord, and this build is completely designed around players that don't want to spend any money whatsoever, no Helix items, nothing involving the Ubisoft store. And I wanted to start here because I thought that was going to be a really good baseline for anybody who sees this video, whether it be somebody that just starts the game or somebody that's on their 300th hour looking to finalize their build right before the next update. You'll realize really quickly that the Warlord build is designed around multiple sets and items, but it all comes back to some guiding principles that helped me really define this build and piece it all together. The first thing I wanted to do was make sure that none of these items cost anything. Boom, check mark, that one is done. The second thing I wanted to do was to make sure the build was viable for the future content coming out, specifically the River Raids. You'll notice there's a little bit of defensive qualities to the build, there's a little bit of offensive qualities to the build, and ultimately, it's a very flexible build. It fits a lot of different play styles and will hopefully resonate with more people than a very niche and specific build. Third, I wanted to go off the beaten path just a little bit. Everybody knows about the Thanes and Mentor set, and of course anybody can build a set with the shop items. I really wanted to push myself to create a set that works for all types of players that wasn't something that everybody had out on the internet already. And that's exactly what I've accomplished with the Warlords build. So let's not waste any more time, and let's start with the items. Now I mentioned we have multiple sets in the mix here, and I want to start with the Brigandine set. We're going to use a two-piece Brigandine set build because that's going to increase our armor when surrounded by more than two enemies. I mentioned that I want this build to work for the river raids. Of course, when you're raiding settlements or raiding camps or castles, you're going to be surrounded by a lot of enemies. This gives us a little bit of sustain on a battlefield. I thought that was really important for this build. And of course, there are other sets that are all YOLO attack and, and crit, and I really wanted to do something different with this build. That's why I focused on the heavier armor set, the Brigandine armor set, that also gives us a little bit of viability when it comes to armor and defense. Now on the other side of things, we have the Mentor set. Three pieces of the Mentor set. The reason we use three of those pieces is because the Mentor set is lightweight, and we'll talk about that in just a second here. Now the Mentor set bonus increases your attack after critical hits, and you can probably already see where this is going. We're gonna focus on a crit heavy build. Now at a quick glance, the Mentor set and the Brigandine set don't really have much in common, but again, it's all going back to those guiding principles. Sustain on a battlefield, flexibility for all types of players, and again, pushing myself to create something that was a little bit different. Now let's focus on the weapons here, because I think it's all going to start to make a lot more sense. Our first weapon here is Fafnir's Fang. This is going to be in your main hand. This is, of course, a spear, increases your critical chance when surrounded by more than three enemies. Of course, that ties right into the Brigandine set and that set bonus, and that's what we're focusing on here. A lot of enemies and increasing our crit. In the offhand, we have Sutinger's Claw. You guys know I love this weapon. Increases your critical damage after each hit up to 10 times. And here is the secret with Sutinger's Claw. You don't actually need to attack with the dagger to get that effect to proc. You can do that with Fafnir's Fang. So you can choose to use the Seeks if you want, or you can choose to not use it and just reap the benefits. Now I mentioned before we're using three pieces of the Mentor set because they're lightweight, and that all ties back to the bow. We're gonna use Death Scald for this build, which increases your critical chance the lighter you are. Again, you don't have to use this bow. This is a light bow, it does a lot of damage, and it is a fantastic choice for anybody that likes archery. But if you don't wanna use it, you can still reap the benefits of the piece. Now that is incredibly important because again, guiding principle is flexibility. If you don't want to use the Seek, Sutinger's Claw, you don't have to. If you don't want to use Death Scald, you don't have to, but you're still reaping the benefits of both of those items. 
Now we can take this entire set up a notch when it comes to the runes, and I want to focus on the diamond runes. The lesser runes are not that important, you can focus on whatever you want. I choose to focus on attack and health, very straightforward things. But when it comes to the diamond runes, there are some specific ones you're going to want to focus on here. For Sutinger's Claw, I'm using the Light Deft Rune, which increases my critical chance the lighter I am. Obviously, we're going for a lightweight build, or as lightweight as we can make it. Obviously, the Brigandine set is heavy, but we're going as light as we can, and we're going to try and reap the benefits of that by using a rune that increases our critical chance the lighter we are. On the Death Scald, we have the same exact rune. Again, trying to compound that effect to the best of our ability and getting more crit chance on our weapons. Now on Fafnir's Fang, things are a little different. We're using the Chained Fury rune because this is going to be our bread and butter. We're going to use a lot of attacks, light attacks, heavy attacks from Fafnir's Fang. So using the Chained Fury rune, increasing your attack after each hit, just makes a lot of sense to me. It's a fantastic rune. It was pretty easy to get back in the day when you could use the beggar trick. And ultimately, it's going to be the most valuable rune in your collection because it's going to constantly deliver increased attack. Obviously, the higher your attack, the more those crits hit. So it all ties together nicely. When you take a step back and you actually look at the Viking Warlord build, I think you'll start to see that a lot of the pieces work well together. It may not be the strongest or best build in the game, but there are a lot of positives that we can focus on here. The Brigandine set is giving us sustain on a battlefield that's going to be essential for river raids. Ultimately, we're bound to get hit, and having a little bit of armor and a little bit of a cushion is going to be a good thing. The Mentor set increasing our crit means we're deadlier on the battlefield, and tying in all of the various weapons and runes that we talked about, we're going to be cutting through enemies left and right. And in practice, that's exactly what happens. You get hit, you shake it off, you get back into the fight, and because you're using a dual wield spear and seeks, you have a lot of flexibility to attack fast, attack heavy, however you want to attack, you're going to be able to accomplish that. Now in terms of abilities, this is 100% up to the player. I choose to use Vengeance of Thor, Dive of the Valkyries, Rage of Helheim, and Fire Strike. I don't feel like we're really trying to tap into anything specific here, I just like using these four abilities because I think they give me the flexibility that I need to deal with a number of different situations. Rage of Helheim if I need to take out a tough enemy, Vengeance of Thor if I'm looking to capitalize on the attack of my weapons, Dive of the Valkyries is always my oh shit button if I get kind of surrounded by enemies and I need to knock them down and get some space, and then of course Fire Strike is just fantastic for dealing a lot of damage to a lot of enemies. All four of those abilities really tie in well with what we're trying to accomplish with this build. On the range side of things, it doesn't really matter. You guys can choose exactly what you want. I'm preferential to Mark of Death, Incendiary Powder Trap, Focus of Nornir is an absolute must, and whatever you want to do for that fourth one, I choose to use Axe Blizzard. Now in practice, guys, this set performs exactly how you would expect. Very even keeled, very easy to wrap your head around. There's not a lot of niche things that you need to know. You don't need to know any sequence of attacks or special move sets. It's all about just getting into a fight, dealing as much damage as you can, and getting out. You've got a lot of sustain, you've got a lot of attack, of course that crit, and I think you guys will enjoy this set immensely. Now, if you guys have any questions about this build, please let me know in the comment section below. I try to go through all the different facets of the gear. Of course, if you want to know where each of these pieces are, you're going to have to watch a guide or look up a guide on the internet. I don't have a video of that on the channel, but hopefully this sets you on the right path, and who knows? Maybe you try out the build, maybe you find something else out about it that we could all learn as a community. So let me know in the comment section below. And please, guys, if you want more of these types of videos, you got to let me know. This is my first build for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have no idea if you guys are going to love it or hate it. Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, like the video and subscribe to the channel completely free for you. And it really does help us out a ton. My name is Kodiak. And from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.